Hi. Hi. Look who's here on a Saturday. Yay. I love it. Girl time. I, know. I needed girl time. I know. And we're um we're in blush today. We're matching in blush. I'm gonna pull this down so we can like oh. little blushing brides, but Except not. For, I don't wanna cause problems. Sorry. Give us a little less headroom. There we go. <laughs> There we go. Okay. Hi. So. Happy Saturday. Happy Saturday. All right. Shannon just graduated her last My child, baby. her baby. Yes. Troy graduated from. He graduated from Dwyer. Oh. Um, and he graduated Monday night. Oh. And, you know, I, I have to be honest. I wasn't prepared for how I would feel. I'm a crier and I'm emotional, obviously. Right. Shocking for everybody. But I'm I, Sorry. I was time. not prepared for how um, how excited and happy and joyful I would be. I'm sorry. I'm trying to. Okay, hold on two seconds. I gotta plug in this microphone. I forgot about this. <laughs> hold on. <laughs> sorry, guys. Okay, let's try this again. I should have had this. I should have had this all prepared, but I didn't. We're experiencing technical <laughs> difficulties. Please stand by. This is why we need photographers because. Okay, there we okay, go. That's better. Okay, sorry about that. Hi, Denise. <laughs> Thank you. And hi, Lori. Okay, okay so, so what I'm, I'm saying is I was not prepared for how elated and I gotta be honest, like the, the feeling I felt that night and the feeling I felt the next day, it was a joy that I, I really have never felt. A pride, a joy. Was it different than when your daughter graduated? It was. Oh. Because... You set out on this journey and you have children and you are you have all these goals the whole time, right? Because right. like, I really had to analyze it, of course, because then right. I was like, why am I so joyful? <laughs> because you're a therapist yeah, and that's what, I, you do. that's what I do. <laughs> so I had to go into my head and figure it out. So it's like you set out on this journey and there's so much anxiety and there's so much, you know, you're trying so hard to do it right and do it right and do it right. And the main goal was like, I think, oh, I mean, for me, it's like I want to get these kids to the finish line healthy happy, alive. I mean, we take that for yeah. granted. Some people lose their children along the way. So yeah. happy, healthy, alive, feeling good. And then I'm an education person. So for me, I really wanted my kids to go to college. I groomed them from a very young age to go to college. Yeah. So I wanted those things. And so as I'm sitting there, now I'm emotional. So as I'm sitting there watching him walk across the stage, he's, you know, six feet tall, right. strapping, <laughs> healthy. I know his abs are healthy because he shows me all the time. <laughs> mom, mom, mom. Mom, my, my abs. abs. My abs. <laughs> so here he is, healthy, happy. He was lit up and safe, alive, and he's headed to Florida State on June 23rd. Aww. And Hannah's at University of Florida. And it was like... I did it. Yes. We did it. Yeah. I can't take credit. His father, his stepmom, his stepdad, his siblings, his half siblings, his yeah. grandparents, my friends, the village, we did it. Yeah. And I was just like, it's amazing to do that. Yeah. You know, there's so many things that could have gotten in the way. And we did put the plane in the ground. So <laughs> we put the plane in the ground sophomore year, and then that boy pulled the plane out of the ground and put himself at Florida State. Yeah. And so I was just so proud, so, so grateful. I felt so blessed and um, and just so joyful. And the thing with Troy that's kind of, kind of interesting is that all children are different. My daughter was one of those that like at 19, 20, when you say, you're gonna be 20, she goes, I know, don't tell me, I don't wanna be 20. My son at six was like, mom, I'm getting a car and I'm gonna drive. And I'm like, really buddy? Cause you got a long way, way to go. Yeah. He wanted to be an adult from yeah. five years old. Aww. So watching him get his dream. Yeah. I have been high this week oh, in a way I never awesome. expected. Yeah, that's it's awesome. really, really great. So Denise says we have five kids. Our oldest is 41, youngest is 18, graduating next year. That's awesome. Wow, you're gonna feel this feeling. <laughs> yeah. But what we wanted to talk about today was the new rules mm. when your child becomes an adult. So yes. you don't have the control as a parent that you did when they were nine or 10 yeah. or 13 than you do when they're now 18 and headed off to college. Yeah. And the reason this came up is not only because Shannon's uh, son graduated, but also I got a text from my girlfriend this morning. <laughs> okay, listen to this. So we were on a group text with all of our girlfriends and our one friend says, hi guys, look at this. And she sends us a picture of some shoes by her front door. I love it. Those shoes do not belong to anyone in her house. Which thing doesn't belong here? <laughs> Those shoes 
belong to her college age daughter's boyfriend. boyfriend. So the college age daughter is home mm -hmm. for the summer. Mm -hmm. And all of a sudden, my friend woke up and saw these shoes mm -hmm. in her, at her front door that belonged to the boyfriend and the daughter's door closed. Yes. What do you do? <laughs> I've been here. You have been here? <laughs> I got a call from my aunt who was checking on my dogs and she's like, why is the car here and the door is closed? And I'm like, oh, because I'm out of town. That's right. why. So most of us have little interesting situations like this with our teenage kids. Yeah. But it's interesting how you said, what do you do now that you're not in control? And I'm giggling to myself because I feel like I've known that I've not been in, been in control, control for, for a long years. Time. Yeah. So if you're one of those parents that's still figured out how to control it, good for you. <laughs> <laughs> I'll hail the king. Yeah. But things are fixing a change. Yeah. So the thing about my girlfriend is she said, you know, her daughter was smart because the dad was on call at the hospital. Mm -hmm. So she knew her dad wasn't going to be home. But doesn't she know that mom's going to tell dad everything? Well, I would think so, but I don't know if mom's <laughs> going to tell dad everything. So she was like, do I bust in there? Do I make a scene? Do I tell him this is not okay? Like, what do I do? 20 minutes later, I get a text from her and she's like, I'm making them breakfast now. <laughs> When all else fails, <laughs> make them breakfast. Food, yeah. feed them. So do uh, you bust in? Do you make a scene? I mean, because you still have rules under your house, right? You do. So, okay, so I'm going to just be straight up honest and say I am speaking as a mom, not just a therapist, and I'm just speaking as a person who has their own opinions because mm -hmm. this is going to be different for, for everybody. everybody. Yeah. Okay? From For the Catholic home, I mean, I... I have a lot of Catholic friends. My husband's Catholic. I mean, I've seen all kinds of interesting things and bargains and deals go on in Catholic homes. Like, right. you need to not do this until this. And right. So everybody's going to handle this differently. My approach has been very um, not the norm. Mm -hmm. I, at a very young age with my kids, said, you can tell me anything and, and I'm going to answer any question you ask. Which now, for the past five years, I've been like, stupid, stupid, stupid. Why did they tell me now? Why, why have I done this to myself? And they'll tell me now. They're like, well, Mom, you wanted to know. You told us to tell you. We could tell you anything. And I'm like, ah, my yeah. ears are bleeding. But that was the premise that I set up for my kids because I wanted them to be able to tell me if they were doing something dangerous. Yeah. I wanted them to be able to tell me about drugs and alcohol and sex. drinking and driving and sex and yeah. STDs and all of it. And so they have. <laughs> the worst decision of my life but I think they would say they greatly appreciate it and I yeah. have given them guidance but because I've been that kind of a mom there's no secrets there's no games I've known from day one with my kids when they've entered that arena mm -hmm. and so I've been able to guide them as far as safety and prevention and protection but it's also set up a little bit of a weird arrangement with them kind of being like hey going in my room and it's like oh no I don't want to be here <laughs> yeah so I think that that's really the, the bottom line and it's gonna be for everything now that your kids are 18 is what are your rules for you what are your rules for your home? Right. What are your rules for the money you provide? Yeah. What are the rules for the car you pay for and insure? Right. But those of you that are very controlling, which is like 97% of you because that's <laughs> right. just how we are. Remember, fear allows us to control. So control is, fear is managed by control. So when we're fearful, we will control. That right. is what we do. We get scared and then we say, well, if you ever and if you don't, and, mm -hmm. and that's what we do as parents and as humans, right? So I get that you're going to want to control what I am going to say to you that I believe is healthy. Now, this is from my therapist hat. Your child has a right to make their own mistakes. Your child has a right to their journey. Your child has a right to make their own decisions. However, when those decisions affect you directly, affect your finances, affect your sanity or whatever, you have to set boundaries around what you need from your child. Mm -hmm. But this gets very, very dicey because if you, you're going to have to check your intention. If you're starting to say, perfect example, like you need to be home at midnight. 
well, why do I need to be home at midnight? Well, because nothing good happens after midnight. A child should not be out at one o'clock. That's when all the drunks are on the road. And that's when you shouldn't. Da, 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 da. So when you start setting that boundary, that's about control. Yeah. You don't want your kid out. You don't want them to get exposed to cocaine or heroin. And you don't want them drinking, driving, blah, 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 blah. That's about control. What I would say is, you know what? I get up every day and go to work at seven. Yeah. This is my home and this is my sanctuary. Right. I'm shutting this place down by 12, 30, one o'clock, I'm gonna set the alarm and everything else. You need to be home here by that time or you need to send me a text prior to that time saying you're sleeping out. Yeah. I'm not in charge of you, I can't control you right. and what you do, but I can control the way my home is governed and what time I get to go to bed because otherwise I'm gonna be up worrying about you yeah. and all that other stuff. That's good. Right? Yeah, I so, like that. If, if, so you have to check your intention. If your intention is to control their behavior, I would really caution you. Now, I, I, this is dicey. I have a 19-year-old daughter. I provided her a car. I pay the car insurance. I pay for her college. So, for example, the one rule I have, when you're driving home to Gainesville, you are not to be driving on the road at pitch dark. You're not to leave here at 5 and drive from 5 to 10 in the pitch dark. That literally unravels me for safety purposes, mm -hmm. and I worry sick about her, so on and so forth. But here's the other thing. When or if she breaks down at nine o'clock, mm -hmm. what is that gonna do to me in Palm Beach County? She's now three and a half hours away on the side of the road, and guess whose problem it's now? Yeah, mine. mine. Mom, I need you to come get me, I need you to drive up, so right. for me, so that's how I'm able to do the rule. Right. Right? Because this is what I need. This is what I need. Right. I am not going to get in my car and come rescue you four hours away because right. you, and in the dark, you're sitting on the side of the road in the dark. Now I'm on the side of the road in the dark. Mm -hmm. Now we're at risk to get hit and run over and all this stuff, and I unfortunately know people who have buried their family members from this scenario, mm -hmm. so absolutely not. And I can say that because that car you're driving up there is mine. My car. I pay for it, yeah. I bought it, and I'm paying the insurance. So th that's my only rule. She tries to break it every single solitary time she comes home. <laughs> I think she just broke it last she week. She just broke it last week. <laughs> but she but tried. What's the, but what's the punishment for that? Is there well, a punishment? So, so, so last week she really tried. She got caught in traffic for an hour and it uh, set her back. So she really yeah. tried. And she has. And what I've had to do, because I'm really horrible at this, admittedly, yeah. but what I've had to say is, and, I, and she knows that there's a chance that I will follow through at this point because I know I need to start following through more. But what I've said is if you blatantly violate that rule, if you're at dad's house and you're at a cookout and you're like, ah, screw mom, and you stay there till 8 and you drive from 8 to 12, the next day I'm coming to get the car. Oh. I'm going to drive up. I'm going to cancel right. my day at work because I work for myself. So you know I can do it. I'll cancel my day. Brian and I will jump in the car. We'll drive up and we'll get your car. And then you can figure out how to maneuver. Right. She's in a small town. She can Uber or whatever. It wouldn't right. be the end of her life, but it certainly would be inconvenient. Yeah. yeah. So I have never done that. I have threatened to do that. But, <laughs> but I've threatened many times. I haven't followed through. She's getting but better. Hannah, you better not. You know. <laughs> Well, like for example, this morning she's coming home because she knew last night. Now I do let her drive home like when she leaves Gainesville at like 5.30 mm -hmm. because she's closer to me. So yeah. if she's three hours in and breaks down or right. whatever, I can get to, she's an hour from me, right? I don't want her four hours away or three hours away on the side of the road. It's pitch black in Gainesville. It's like yeah. deliverance scene, right. you know? Right. Oh, I know. Yeah, <laughs> you know. So um, yeah, so, so that's the kind of thing. But you have to check yourself because if you get into this micromanaging, all you're going to do is push your kid away. You're going to teach them to go underground. You're going to teach them to lie. Right. You're going to teach them to manipulate. But what age do you start that? Because I feel like even like 16, 17, they're already starting to get, Absolutely. you know? Absolutely. I, I really, really encourage people. The rules for me, when I used to work with children and their parents, I would say, listen, zero to 14, of course, you're coddling, you're protecting, you're, you're, you're doing everything to keep them out of harm's way. You're right. handling this, you're handling that, you're handling this. 14 to 18, treat them the way the world treats them. If you're going down the road at 50 miles an hour and the speed limit is 35, you can flirt all you want, but you're getting a ticket. Yeah. So come up with consequences that fit the crime right. and do those consequences from 14 to 18 so that they can survive in the world. Right. So that when they don't show up to work, they get fired. They're like, yeah, that makes sense. Yeah. That's a consequence. So when they right. speed, they get a ticket. They're like, I, I saw that coming. Yeah. When I did this, you know, when I did, when I came home an hour after curfew, my mom took my car. Right. You know, yeah, like, that happens. So, yeah, so set yeah. those consequences that make sense, that fit the crime. Yeah. You know, don't like take the car for six months because they were 30 minutes late. But okay, so now you you came home after curfew, so now I'm going to take the car for a week, or I'm going to you're not going to go out next weekend. You're going to come yeah. home right after work. Like set consequences that fit. Right. But I definitely believe in doing that 14 to 18 because you do want them to learn. Yeah. The consequences about consequences and yeah. learn about life. 
Yeah, you don't so. want to coddle them so much and protect them so much and be so controlling that then when they go off to college, like I did, yeah. <laughs> yeah. they go crazy. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, I, you know, thank God there was no social media when I was in college. Oh my God. <laughs> I would have been arrested on the stalker so, law. So on this group text where we're all talking about like how we're hey, dealing, Jean, how we're that? dealing with, um, with our oh, adult geez. children, my, my girlfriend, as we had said at the top of this, she, she woke up this morning to her boyfriend or to her, her daughter's, daughter's boyfriend. boyfriend's shoes at her front door and her daughter's bedroom closed. Now her daughter is 19. She's home from college. And she was saying, do I bust in there? What do I do? So what do you think she... So this re- so this is going to require a sit down. I, I, I wouldn't bust in there because... <laughs> right. I mean, listen. With you, a shotgun? Yeah. <laughs> like, you know, we all know, you know what I know, what you know. You know what's going on and she felt some level of comfort with you. So maybe she's been telling you or whatever. So I, I personally, everybody's different. I wouldn't bust in, but I would, if I'm uncomfortable, because everybody's different with this, right? Like I told you in my house, like everybody tells me all their junk. So Mm -hmm. they have kind of a little bit different rules. But what I would do is sit down and again, express your boundaries. Listen, Natasha, I know that you have been dating this guy for a year and I know that you're intimate. I know you're on birth control. I know you've done everything right. You're a good kid. I, however, do not want to witness it. Yeah. Any more than you'd like to come in and be I don't want to see shoes at my front door. Yeah. <laughs> Any more than you want to come home right. and see me in a negligee and right. red spiked heels and right. dad's in the bedroom. Like, let's have a little respect for each other. Yeah. Like, so what my boundary is, is, you know, some people will say like, when I'm not around, like whatever, I know you're going to do what you're going to do, but yeah. please not when I'm in the house, please right. not when you know I'm coming home or whatever. Or right. if your boyfriend wants to sleep here because he's had too much to drink or whatever safety features, but I want him to sleep in the guest, in the guest bedroom. Room. So yeah. you just need to set what you're comfortable with. And I think you need to communicate it that way. Like, yeah. listen, I get, I'm not judging you. I understand you're a grown adult. You can do what you want, but this is my home that you're doing it in. So these are the rules for my, my home. home. And hopefully your child will respect that. Yeah. Now again, just like the funny story of like, you know, me being out of town, it's like kids will go underground. They will try yeah. to get away with whatever they can get away with. Right. You know what I mean? So you're going to have to work around that. But I think at 19, I do, I do feel like my kids are finally starting to respect yeah. just that, you know, hey, this is my wishes. Please don't do this. Right. You know, like I'm, I'm, I do not do the drinking thing. Like I'm not a drinker. My mom has recovered 37 years from alcoholism. Everyone in my family is recovering alcoholic or drug addict. So I'm not a big proponent of it. I don't have alcohol in my house. I don't want my kids to drink around me. Well, they're both drinking at this point. Right, right. And so it's like my son the other day was like going to Sunfest and he's trying to drink something in my, and I'm like, get out of my house, you know? <laughs> not and in I'm my like, house. This is not legal. Like, I don't, ah, you know, like I don't provide it. I don't want to, right. you know what I mean? And it's like. And so they're trying to, you know, like, yeah. you're right, like, that's, you don't like that kind of thing. Because right. these kids are going to go underground. That's what they're going right. to do. But I, that's Don't have to witness it. I don't want to witness it. I'm yeah. not comfortable with it. I'm not going to buy you liquor. I'm not, that's against the law. Like, so I think everybody has to set their boundaries yeah. with this and just be very clear and make that request. Now, as far as consequences, it gets harder when you're governing what they do with their bodies. I mean, if you do this in my home then, I mean, what are you going to do? Change the locks and say you're not allowed here anymore? I mean, I guess you can. Right. But um, but I think it's really more about, you know, I've said to my kids for years, this is a relationship. Yes, yeah. I'm your mom, but there will come a day where it doesn't really matter that I'm your mom and we'll have a friendship and it's based on respect and trust. And right. so treat me the way you would, you know, somebody that you want in your life and I'll treat you the same. Like this is a relationship. Yeah. So for your friend to say, hey, I felt so disrespected. Yeah. I felt very uncomfortable. I was... Kind of freaked out. I had to leave my own home and go to yoga because I felt so uncomfortable. She did go to yoga. Yeah, yeah, I get it. Hey, Daniel. Yeah, I get it. So, like, you know, so to say, hey, sweetie, please don't do that to me. Please don't put me in a position where I have to leave. And I guess the consequences could be the same because I know she's still paying for all of her expenses. You know, like you could take away something. I guess you know. You could. I I gotta be honest though. I don't know how you were like. We come from different backgrounds, but I tell you what, when I went to University of Florida, everybody's parents were very controlling that way. Like, you need to study history. That's where you're going to, you know, you need to be an accountant. That's where the money is. And if you're not an accountant major, then I'm not going to pay. And I remember I used to call my mom all the time and say, I'm so glad we're poor. Because, (laughs) mm -mm." Really? No, my parents never 
did they, that. But they you never know did that. Whose parents did that? Did you know? But my pa- yes, I did know yeah. people whose parents did that. And yes, it's, I, I it's, have to be honest. I think it's awful. Yeah, like it's I think we have a right to our journey. Yeah, and I think that's changing. I mean, I think it definitely in our generation there were a lot of parents, yeah. a lot of like baby boomers that really wanted to control. Yeah. You know the the profession that they're with kids the first strings right we'll yes. cut you off we'll cut you off so yeah. i don't like to go there. there yeah i really don't it's like I, I really think it's more about the relationship like yeah. if you trust and respect me and i treat I could, you well and you treat right. me well like that's really and that's you know with hannah we've really had to walk through this because troy Troy just does what he's going to do. And, you know, he's like, he's like well, a he's rebel a Gem- without a cause. He's a Gemini he's man. He's a Gemini so. man. So I'm like. <laughs> I'm a Gemini woman. So yeah. I understand. She feels you. I can't control her either. She's That's like, right. yeah, do whatever you want. Right. But Hannah's really struggled with this because she really wants to be an adult and she wants to do her yeah. and she doesn't want to hurt me. And so that's what we've really worked on is like, hey, that's painful for me. Like, yeah. how, can it, how can you do you and be you, but not just disrespect and disregard me? Yeah. And so she's really worked hard, and, and Hannah, shout out, you've done well at like figuring out how to be respectful, yeah. in, 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 but also be who you want to be, yes. and do what you want. You know, I think what she's learning and figuring out is, you know, you don't always get to do what you want when it levels your entire family. Yeah. You know, like, oh, I just, you know, I'm just going to do me. I don't really care. Well, okay, but then you need to know when it comes around, your family might do the same to you. Yeah. Where they know that you matter, but they're like, well, we don't care. We're just going to be completely selfish. So it's about negotiating relationships at this point. And that's what you're teaching your kids. How do we negotiate this new relationship? I want Mm -hmm. to respect you, you know, setting budgets, all that good stuff. Mm -hmm. But also, and I guess if I had to integrate something that my kids were recently, we were processing together is do have those consequences. Because that's one of the things that my daughter, she knows that I'm a softie and, you know, (laughs) as much as she was asking for the consequences, she wasn't asking yesterday when she ran out of money. (laughs) So (laughs) it's an interesting thing, but she's like, I want a budget, you know? And I'm like, okay, then we're going to do this. But then she's like, mom, I don't have any money. I'm like, "Mm -hmm." (laughs) and she wants me to cut her, you know, cut her off when she doesn't have money and let her figure it out. So this is a very dicey Dicey. time. Yes. So you do want to let them have consequences wherever you, I I think wherever you can safely, like Mm -hmm. I don't really want her to not have gas in her car and be like breaking down on the highway. Right. So it's, it's, it is dicey. I definitely think we overdo and I'm guilty as charged. But I think it's if you take so it back even the to therapist your doesn't follow through. Oh no, it's hard. <laughs> this is hard stuff. That's right. Really hard stuff. I threaten really my kids stuff. all the time, and then I never follow through with it. I'm like, but I do. I mean, I do something like I took my daughter's phone away when some stuff was happening. So I have done that. But yeah, like for a, for a 19 year old, like can't really take their phone away, even though you're paying for it, because that's your well, lifeline I, to them. I have to tell a funny story, oh. and they're going to hate me, but it's just too good. Really quickly, Mike Crucis, he graduated at 16, so his journey <gasps> started early. I oh, didn't that's know that amazing. Yeah. Smarty pants. Smarty yeah. pants alert. That's awesome. Okay, so what's your so funny story? So funny story. So my kids did an intervention on me, and it was... <laughs> It was a beautiful thing, and my son, like, he's made for law school. He's so he's just so smart, and he's such a great debater. And I'm not making fun of them because they really, they did a wonderful job of of speaking up, and they commute. And he was very respectful. He didn't stomp out. He didn't get mad. We we walked through it. But their intervention was his intervention was you need to let Hannah fall on her face, basically. Like you need to let her be an adult, stumble, fumble, do not fix anything for her anymore. Mm-hmm. You know, whatever. And I kind of looked at Hannah like really because. Hannah and I have this interesting relationship where she wants me to fix it, yeah. but then she wants to be an adult. Yeah. And so, and so I do try to let her as much as possible, but then also when your kid calls you from college and they're like freaking out, they're overwhelmed, they're stressed, mm-hmm. they're in final exams and this needs to be handled, you, I am like, okay, let me just make life easier for you and handle this. Yeah. And she'll let me, right? Yeah. She's thrilled. But then a week later, she's like, I'm an adult. <laughs> right. So, you know, this is, we talked about this at Healthy Mothers, Healthy Babies. This right. is the individuation stage. She's trying to figure it out. I'm trying to figure it out. But they were very firm. And my son was like, you need to, you know, like put her on a budget. And if she runs out of money, she runs out of money. And she's not right. going to die. And all this great stuff, right? So I was like, okay. And I was like, deep breathing. I'm like, no, this right. is this is true. And I have been working on that since she's right. been at college. But I can even be more the enforcer. Like, they want me to be the enforcer. I'm like, okay, I can, I can be tough. Right. So, but they're on their way to Sunfest and they're racing out the door and he's ready to get his party on and he's running. So they race out the door and they get to his, because he lives with his dad now. So they get to dad's house and they're getting ready and he's putting his stuff on and he's buying tickets. And so he needs her card for his tickets and she doesn't know where her wallet is. So they call and he goes, mom, I need you to look for Hannah's wallet. And I go, 
Well, that, tell me more. That's interesting. <laughs> well, she's lost it. She has no idea where it is. Can you just... And I go, well, in honor of our discussion 17 minutes ago... I'm not rescuing you. <laughs> the wallet's kind of important because it has her credit card, her driver's license. She was going to fly the next day. I said, so... I walked in a room, it was a nightmare, I kind of glanced, yeah. there was no possible way. I was like, right. sorry buddy, I go, she needs to have her hands on that because when you're an adult yeah. and you lose your wallet, you have to cancel your credit card Yeah. and she would need to get a new license right. and she's flying tomorrow, so I guess you gotta come back here. <laughs> like, he's it. like, no! Can't you just bring it here? He goes, mom, just this once, and I go, but you just did an intervention on me like 14 minutes ago. So, and Hannah's like, no, that's not what we just asked her to do. We gotta know that. That's right. So, Only when it's convenient for us. Exactly. So, and we do we want couple, you to stay stay away? Yeah. So we had a couple of those incidences since it. So it, yeah. it's kind of funny. Oh, I love it. Okay, yes. I think that's our food. We ordered food. <laughs> Let me so, go. Let me go grab it. Really quick. Yeah. So anyway, that's so that's the fun part about this is it is a process. It is a journey. The the whole concept of individuating it takes both sides to figure this out, and it's a personal experience. And everybody's going to be different. So don't beat yourself up. I'm figuring it out as I'm as I'm teaching and talking about it. As I know the rules, I'm still figuring it out. And every kid is different, right? So some kids are really good at kind of clean boundaries and. Other kids, it's going to be kind of murky, and it's just a process for everybody, and we're all doing the best that we can. So I think just be gentle with yourself, um, but figure out what you need and what you want from your kids. Lunchtime! <laughs> figure out what you need and what you want from your kids, and that's going to make it go a little smoother, because yeah. that way, at least you know, I need to take care of me. Right. These are my boundaries to take care of me, Yeah. and you are an adult. You can choose to do it how you do it, but right. you cannot crossover into my boundaries. I like that. I like that yeah. a lot. So I think, I think, um, my friend handled it. <laughs> so I'm on a group text with all of my girlfriends and yeah. this is where this, this, this incident came up and I just saw they sent another group text. <laughs> <laughs> I woke up this morning to like 25 messages. I'm like, can you guys just take it down a notch on the group texting? <laughs> and they sent all pictures from, from college. Oh wow. You know, back when we had to get them um, developed, oh, you know, and so some fine. of them are like, Oh, okay. <laughs> I don't remember that night. <laughs> were they gently reminding, Hey, what about when you were 19? Yeah. Remember when you got busted and at my house and my parents? So I'm like, I love those right. texts. That's so funny. True. My one girlfriend was like, we used to sneak out of the house to go to all our the boyfriend's house yeah. in high school. Yeah. And I was like, Oh my oh, God. Whoops. Yeah. yeah. I didn't do any of that because I was in the boondocks in Monticello. So I went, so when I was at, went to college, I was saving it all up for college and I had a fun time at University of Florida. My mom was psychic, so I got busted for <laughs> everything. Lie. Yeah, my it. kids will say that now too. They're like, oh, God, how does mom it. know? All right, guys. So thank you for watching. Yes. And um, our next live show is actually going to be our live on location full production show will be June 7th. It's yes. a Friday. It's going to be at the Inn Spa at the Delray Beach Marriott. And the beauty of this um, show, which the topic is going to be self-care mm -hmm. and what that looks like. Mm -hmm. You know, because it looks self, like a spa day. Self care isn't all about a spa day. <laughs> I mean, it, it's a nice little, you know, element of of self care. But what I love about this is they're going to be doing because it's Global Wellness Day. Ooh. They're going to be doing um, treatments at the Ooh. spa for our live audience. That's awesome. So they're going to do like hydrofacial. They're going to have massage. Like yeah. all that will be available for our live audience that day. That's... So if you would like to come to that show, it'll be so fun. Mm -hmm. um, email Stephanie, Stephanie at SusanneBoydProductions.com. So she right. will organize the guest list. And we already have a good amount of people coming to uh, that show. Duh. I, was, I was like, can I get a spot? Oh, I got to do the show. I want a spot treatment. We'll let you after. Don't worry. We got you. That's awesome. That's awesome. Yeah, so it'll be a lot of fun. It. Friday, June 7th. And the show's going to be at 11 a.m. So it's going to be a little bit earlier than our other shows. Yeah. But make sure you set an alert so you um, are able to watch that. You can come get your face show. Thank you, Denise. Thanks for watching. And don't forget to sign up for our mailing list if you want to get more information on any of our live shows. Mm -hmm. um, sign up for our horoscope. We send out a hor horoscope on the full moon. You're saying and the it like moon. it's a 
horror scope. Like horror. Horror scope. It's terrifying. <laughs> Sign up for your horror scope. <laughs> it actually is not terrifying. It's actually it's a really good horror, horror scope. Yeah. It's legit. So go to um, www. WYFWTY.com and it'll pop up a little box and you can sign up for our mailing list. I never could have done that. WYFWTY. I got it down. Like, That's the acronym for what your friends will tell you. Yeah. You didn't know. What your friends will tell you. Subscribe to one. YouTube. Go to our Instagram. Follow our Instagram stories. Go to Twitter. We're, we're everywhere. We're everywhere. We're everywhere, everywhere. <laughs> All right, guys. Have a great day. Thanks for watching. Take care.